King 5 News has not been accurate when it comes to their reports on some of the volunteers I've been working with around Washington State trying to clean up voter rolls. Let's dive into the details. Thank you for watching. My name is Glenn Morgan, and this is We the Govern. So, as I mentioned earlier, King 5 News has just done a series of videos lately, of reports, and it's done by Chris Ingalls here, uh, a journalist that I've at times respected in the past. I actually like some of his work, but on this subject lately, he has just been incapable of uh, being accurate or even remotely close to honest with what's actually been going out in the field with some of the volunteers that I've been working with around the state. So let's get into some of the details and the specifics here as best I can, and I want to just make sure that you understand what I'm talking about because I find this personally quite troubling, especially when I what I do see is that King 5 News goes out of their way to uh, protect some of the more slimy politicians that are out there or people that are certainly not necessarily doing a good job. And it's weird that their obsession has been to protect guys like Patty McGuire here, our Mason County Auditor, and attack and, uh, you know, basically serve as a conduit for threats uh, against our volunteers. And I find that to be very disappointing. And this includes just sloppy reporting, willful deception, uh, malicious editing, and all to fit kind of a predetermined political narrative. And I find this really disturbing because just for some backdrop here, I, uh, over the last 13 years, I'm one of those guys that gets records requests and uh, I find whistleblowers. And sometimes I've come across stories when I was at the Freedom Foundation or on my own that uh, I just can't get to or is it doesn't, doesn't fit something that I'm going to be reporting on. And I'll oftentimes feed this up to reporters, and sometimes that's included King 5 News in the past. And at times they've been able to take that and run with it and get really good stories done about corruption or something else. And uh, I can tell you with this recent experience, there's no way in heck I'd ever send a whistleblower or anybody with any story uh, over to these guys because I'm just not happy with uh, how they've done this reporting. And it's been very disappointing uh, to observe and to experience, especially when you know something about what's going on and you can see just how inaccurate some of their reporting has been. So let's go to Mason County. We'll start out there. This is one of the first stories that uh, I saw Chris Ingalls at King 5 News dive into. Mason County is located in the South Puget Sound area, uh, more rural district. Shelton's located there, and uh, that's where they've gone in. They, being King 5 News, has gone in to look at some of the elections process. And in the as they've dug into this, their main defense has been to protect the Mason County auditor, Patty McGuire, who's Seattle's favorite auditor from Mason County. And uh, it's, you know, he showed up on our radar a few times in the past, but I think it's important to reference that this guy is uh, basically uh, reported, called himself a political hack and uh, the self-described political hack when he was talking to the Los Angeles Times about 12, uh, 22 years ago. This is actually an article from that time, and I've linked to it down below if you want to read it. He des described himself as a political hack for the Democratic Party, uh, doing political hackery kind of stuff, and uh, hyper-partisan and very much focused on doing these things down in Oregon. And there's a whole article about him. The guy's been interviewed on it. That's his backdrop, which is not a great backdrop for deciding to run for uh, Mason County Auditor, but nevertheless, that's what he did. And uh, it doesn't mean that he's suddenly an expert just because he was a political hack. I will also point out that like a lot of elected officials, he puts out envelopes, you know, fundraising envelopes. And normally these fundraising envelopes have this little section on it right here where you can see, uh, hey, I'm also willing, not only am I donating money, but I'm also willing to make phone calls or walk a precinct, uh, which apparently um, King 5 News doesn't like, uh, putting up yard signs. Or in this case, what was really unusual is he actually put disparage my opponent. Uh, which I thought that was really uh, funny and uh, weird. But nevertheless, now that I see how this guy operates, it makes sense. Uh, getting people to disparage his opponent is a high priority of his. That, that's the only way a political hack is going to stay in office. And so... Uh, the other reason why he's been showing up on our radar in the past is because he was one of the county auditors in Washington State who took some of uh, Mark Zuckerberg's half a billion dollars or so that he decided to dump into the elections and basically distort the election results and behavior and policies all around the country uh, in a very aggressive and unprecedented way. I mean, there's never been a billionaire who's come out and bought uh, and put money into all these different election counties, and one of them was Mason County. And it was Patty McGuire because that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to take that cash, and that put them on our radar. But if you are looking at Chris Inkles over there at King 5 News, 
Um, I'm not aware of him having taken one of pa uh, Patty McGuire's envelopes and checking that box and saying, listen, I'm going to go out and disparage uh, this guy's opponent. But nevertheless, he might as well have done that because that is all his reporting out of Mason County has ever done, is instead of focusing on some of the challenges and the effort that it takes to go out and actually clean up the voter rolls. And I mean, at least King Five went out and did knock on some doors and they realized and they admitted even in that effort that they made their own mistakes. It's not an easy process. But instead, what they did is spent most of their time disparaging the volunteers who'd be willing to do so. Now, let me talk about just some of the other sloppy reporting they did. Here's a video, just a little clip from that video, uh, from the video, the first one that they did in Mason County. Did a dead man vote from this Shelton address? The report says a voter who died in the summer of 2019 cast a ballot in 2020. County Elections got a post office notice that the man moved to Arizona in 2021, where he died later. Info we confirmed with two neighbors. Now, the reason why I want to point this out is that when you go back and you look at it, the main question is, did somebody who is deceased vote from uh, this address? And the, according to the voting records, yes, they did. Now, how did our volunteers, who aren't paid, who don't have the staff that King 5 News has, how did they go and verify that information? Well, they called the coroner, which is something that King 5 News should have done. But our volunteers actually did it, and King 5 News knows they did it because they provided the redacted information as an insert into the video. You can see it right here. And what that was, was that was a conversation directly with the Mason County Auditor, who, as it turns out, actually knew this dead guy and had known him personally. And he remembers that he had died. And he, I mean, of all people, the coroner is actually the person who's going to know and that he had uh, led kind of this, this person who had passed away, had led kind of an unusual lifestyle there towards the end. And instead of King 5 News just picking up the phone and calling this coroner themselves and verifying that this conversation was accurate, instead what they did is they rambled around the neighborhood apparently, talked to a couple neighbors who didn't know what happened to the guy, and they just said, oh, we think he moved to Arizona. No, somebody, hit, there was a ballot sent in that guy's name after he was dead and it was counted. That is just sloppy reporting, and it's pointless for them to have done that. It isn't, doesn't mean that King 5 News didn't find some mistakes that the many, many volunteers that were out there doorbelling might have made, but they're relatively minor in the big scheme of things, and it was a desperate attempt, super, super sloppy reporting uh, by King 5 News just to promote this political narrative that they seem obsessed with promoting. How dare any volunteer actually get out there and do any work? Beating up on volunteers, unpaid volunteers that are actually putting in the time without special treatment to go out there. It's very thankless. It's a hard touch uh, process. Even when you've narrowed down uh, the list the way that we have using government databases like the US Post Office Change Address System and others, um, instead, King 5 News has decided their highest priority is protect the powerful special interests and push this predetermined narrative uh, attacking those who would dare put their time into volunteering. And let's talk about this county auditor and some of the things that King 5 News could have asked him that's kind of worth asking right now. First of all, let's start talking about the fact that a very unusual situation, first time in Mason County history, a DC special interest PAC funded by billionaires has decided to dump massive amounts of money, especially by Mason County standards, into this race trying to help keep Patty McGuire in office. That's a great question. Why the heck does this self-described political hack out of Mason County, why does he get somehow this special treatment from this for the first time ever in the county history to get DC money flowing into his race? Somebody should ask that question. Of course, King 5 News won't. Somebody should ask the question, not so much even that Patty McGuire took the Zuck Bucks, which he did, and, and it apparently did have a significant impact in Mason County election processes, but why did he bother to lie about how he used that money? He claims he spent on this newsletter, but when you actually do records requests and it took forever to get this information, it looks like that that's, not, that's not how he spent the money. Why would he lie about that? It's very strange, and yet that's what he did. Good question for King 5 News and one that they won't ask him at all. Now, the other question is, why did Patty McGuire, when he was the auditor, be the, he was the only county in the area that during the COVID lockdown decided that alone, again, all the surrounding counties, uh, Grace Harbor and Kitsap and Thurston, all of them would allow some in-person observation uh, of the election. People who come in there observe. Sure, they had absurd COVID uh, protocols and masks and distances and all this other stuff, but at least they allowed people in there to provide some level of observation. And instead, 
what, what we had in Mason County was the black box approach to elections, which, by the way, we wouldn't accept in any third world country that did that. But in Patty McGuire's auditor's office, that's what they did. It's a great question to ask him because it was unnecessary. It was not consistent with what other counties did. And he was almost alone, I believe, in doing this throughout the state. That's a great question. No wonder people are upset with this guy and how he's running elections there. So the other question then that I would ask him is if, if I was King 5 News, and I actually cared, uh, why not ask him why is it that 80% of his money doesn't come from the county? It almost all comes from Seattle or out of state or some other special interest groups that are putting money into this guy's political campaign. It's clearly not the people who live there. So this is an interesting thing to look at. These are weird issues popping up in a relatively obscure auditor's race. And instead, what we see is that King 5 News had to focus almost exclusively on attacking the volunteers who dared to actually bother to go out and do the hard and thankless work of canvassing just a small segment of the voter rolls and trying to help the auditor's office clean up the voter rolls. And most of that stuff actually worked. Most of them were issues that were resolved and they were able to get cleaned up in the voter rolls, largely due to the efforts of these people going out and working in the field, trying to help the auditor's office, which really isn't staffed to do that. And instead, Chris Ingalls at King 5 News decided that let's Let's just go and attack those volunteers because that's our priority. How dare they even think that clean up the voter rolls is something they should be allowed to do? It's strange because before we had all mail-in voting, that is what the League of Women Voters would do. This is what I remember my grandma doing in Renton, where they would go around and they'd check the voter rolls. It was very common for them to walk their precincts, double check to see if somebody had moved into the neighborhood that needed to be registered to vote, double check that somebody had laughed or died, that that was correctly reflected on the voter rolls. This was pretty normal. This wasn't controversial. This is what people always did. And that element of being an activist and being involved fell apart after the Washington state, especially towards the late 90s and then decisively in 2011, became an all-mail-in voting system. That was abandoned. And the auditor's offices never really created an effective system to maintain those voter rolls, at least at that level of on-the-ground verification. So, but let's attack those people. I consider this a big problem from the way the King 5 News ran this reporting. The other thing they did is they maliciously edited some of these reports. They did one out of King County where they clearly were taking out of context and really trying to push uh, words into the mouth of our volunteer that they were interviewing at the time, uh, really trying to twist the reports that were made and trying to make them seem like uh, they were something that they were not. Now, one of the other ones that he did just uh, recently was in Skagit, uh, Skagit County. We had a Skagit voter research uh, project that was put together in September of 2021, so over a year ago. And so apparently this report was recently discovered by King 5 News, and there were several defects in how they went and reported this. One of the ones is they implied, and this was something that King 5 News should not be doing, is trying to imply that the canvassing was happening right now in the middle of the election process, even though the report itself was over a year old. And that sort of misinformation makes it seem like people are out there doorbell in the neighborhood uh, right in the middle of election season when it's frankly a terrible time to do this. Uh, you can doorbell for canvas uh, for your candidates, for your campaigns, for collecting signatures in the initiative project. But uh, there's no canvassing being done during this period of time uh, for uh, voter roll cleanup. It's too late, right? Everybody's voting at this point in time. After the election, they'll probably be doing some of that. But uh, King 5 News puts out the story uh, just before Halloween and tries to make it sound like that's what's happening, is that people are actually actively doorbelling right now. The only person who uses the word fraud is Chris Ingalls. He's obsessed with it. He always uses fraud, constantly uses fraud, even when nothing in the report says fraud. Even when talking to the people who were actually putting together that report, they weren't saying fraud. What they were doing is they were saying, we're trying to clean up the voter rolls. But Chris is using clickbait uh, information, just like the people who always talk about Trump. They're trying to use this as clickbait. And I had an NBC News reporter once tell me that it's, it's become uh, ridiculous because they're uh, basically kind of uh, supported and pushed to put the word Trump in somebody's mouth or to imply that the Trump is in the is in the clickbait title and fraud is one of those words too. This is these are words that they're trying to throw in. It's not being an honest reporter. It's trying to create the narrative and then fit what you find, it, make it fit it somehow. 
Now, also, uh, King 5 News misrepresented the numbers that were actually doorbelled. There were thousands of homes that they doorbelled, and they ignored the fact that this was actually a very successful cleanup effort in Skagit County, probably the most successful effort in that county's history at cleaning up the voter rolls. And it was largely due to the fact that these people were able to go out, volunteers, and actively visit as many homes as possible, talk to people, find out what's going on, and send those reports back. Now, by itself, the reports don't change the voter rolls, and they shouldn't be able to, but they do do give a roadmap for the auditor's office to follow up on issues and verify, and I believe that that's what led to a much better cleanup there and many of the other counties that this effort's been implemented in, including Kitsap, including King, including Spokane, that wouldn't have happened otherwise if it wasn't for the fact that these volunteers are willing to dedicate their time, and it's a fairly thankless task, and it's made more thankless when you have a reporter like Chris Ingalls, who simply uses his report then as a vehicle to communicate intimidating threats from the Democratic Party, from county auditors, uh, from other people in an effort to try to intimidate these people who are volunteering and try to convince them not to go out and do that anymore. It's, a, it's weird and it's strange and it's not typical for what I've seen King 5 do in the past, but it is the way that he has exclusively done every one of these stories and each one's getting more extreme and weird as he goes along. It's very disappointing to me. And uh, it doesn't need to happen, and it didn't. It hasn't happened this way in the past with him. Um, this is actually a picture from the Washington Coalition for Open Government, and uh, where uh, Chris Ingalls was deservedly getting a key award for use of public records in doing some of his earlier stories. Some stories I've really liked, like uh, in this one, I believe it was when he did the uh, hospital story uh, exposing some of the mold problems that were being covered up in one of the children's hospitals, if I remember, up in Seattle. But regardless of that, you know, Chris has done a good job in the past doing stories about corruption or other stories of uh, abuse of government programs. Um, he's done some great stories in the past. I don't know why the journalistic integrity has just collapsed for him when it comes to doing stories about the election process. That's just, uh, it's, it's not, it's very disappointing to me, but it's just bizarre and it's strange and it shouldn't be going on. And we don't want to have people in the media who basically will just say anything that they can to protect the political narrative that they're being given by the government officials or the political establishment or somebody else that is really not the appropriate role for the media to have. And yet, for whatever reason, that's the role that uh, Chris Ingalls chose to have in this particular topic. And I, I've done a lot of wonkish things over the years. I've worked in election integrity issues going back 12, 13 years now. To me, I just see this as a regular process that you're trying to fix things. I mean, government is run uh, very incompetently at best. And so for citizens to take the time to go in and find ways of improving it or fixing things, um, they shouldn't be attacked in that process. And unfortunately, that was the road that he decided to go down, and I don't think that's a good thing. Now, what this basically then opens the door to is what can you do when media who's talking to you or, or who you're having to deal with or rely on, what do you do when they become dishonest about a given subject? We saw this with, during COVID, during the lockdowns. Uh, we're definitely seeing it when, uh, when it comes to anything about elections right now. And number one, you have to look for news sources, unfortunately, who are willing to speak truth to power. Clearly, Chris Ingalls isn't anymore when it comes to this topic anyway. And I hope that this doesn't affect all of his other reports that he's done in the past there. But uh, that's unfortunate. So you really can't trust what they're saying now. So you're going to have to start looking for other sources of information. And of course, that's why we're seeing the big churn of where people are trying to look for information because they know that what they're getting from the corporate traditional media sources like King 5 News just can't be trusted when you see people like this uh, going in this direction. And finally, here's a recommendation I have. If you're going to be submitting yourself to an interview, get your own recording of that interview. Uh, you have to let them know. You have to notify them of that fact. But make a full recording from the beginning all the way to the end of the interview so that you can make that, inter that full interview public and put it in context if they maliciously edit the final cut. I fear that King 5 News has done this with one of my volunteers already at least once, and uh, that really disturbs me quite a bit when I see them maliciously creating franken-cuts, right, or trying to uh, manipulate it in a way to be totally different than what you actually spoke about. Uh, having that extra recording, at least that gives you some way of saying, no, 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 this is what we actually said, and this is what uh, the context of what we were saying. 
I've had numerous interviews now for the first time, at least in my experience, uh, where I've interviewed with reporters for, for hours at a time, and they don't like the fact that nothing I said fit the narrative that they were trying to push. And so they uh, really couldn't use any of the quotes. They tried to find other people then to get those quotes. That's interesting to me because that means that somehow they couldn't even manipulate my quote uh, to fit whatever story that they wanted. Uh, but that's not always going to be the case, and if you can record the whole thing, it's easy to document that that uh, journalist, journalist in this case, is trying to push you into saying something that's very different than what you intended to say. And I think that's just a good thing, good habit to be in, and uh, just to let you know, uh, it's probably a good habit to be in at all times when you're dealing with uh, especially the traditional media now. It doesn't have to be the way, but that's the way it is. And nothing should be intimidating you from being willing to shine the light on whatever's going on in government. Good, bad, or ugly, it's important that we try to hold them accountable, that we act as citizens, as people who are engaged in our community to do that. Don't rely on somebody else to do it or be apathetic about it. It's up to us to do it. And even though Chris Ingalls doesn't like it when volunteers are actually willing to go out there and expose the truth about elections or try to get involved, doesn't mean we won't make mistakes, we will. But at least we're trying to make a difference and make an impact and a productive impact with some of the efforts that we have. And it's already paid off in the sense, I think there's been a lot of voter roll cleanup that never would have occurred otherwise. It's improved some of the processes that we're already seeing uh, some of those processes improve. And of course, it's also exposed people like Patty McGuire, who certainly don't want transparency in their office. So, um, but that's okay. Exposing the truth about bad elected officials is part of, the, uh, part of what you have to do. And it's unfortunate that King 5 News isn't recognizing that right now. So, just remember, if you want to make a difference, you have to be involved and being willing to engage. Uh, and uh, I encourage everybody to look at some of the links I have down below. If you want to learn more, go to wethegovern.com. Feel free to subscribe to my newsletter. You can also uh, share this video with others. And uh, Chris, if you're out there, I'm definitely interested in uh, hoping that uh, I can talk you out of going down this weird road that you're heading down this process and get you back into actually reporting the truth and speaking truth to power. Uh, it's a good role to be as a journalist and uh, not beating up on people who are willing just to be volunteers to try to make a difference. So uh, for all those out there who are doing the hard work of canvassing and holding government accountable in whatever small way you're doing it, you are the ones who are going to make an impact. Because the truth is, the future belongs to those who show up.